Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. What do I mean by what does he mean by that? I'll give you a hint. They shouted Hosanna. wanted Jesus to save them as he rode in on a, I guess a colt, so a wild donkey, a donkey that has not been ridden, I think, maybe, wow, that was weird, Got everything just fell together there while I was babbling about Palm Sunday. And I love the, the foreshadowing in the Bible where as Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem for this penultimate meeting with uh, Pontius Pilate. Let's put the shield down. It's a little colder than I thought it would be, but... Oh, excuse me. This is just a, a quick poser uh, Sunday afternoon loop around the hood. I'm not even stopping for food or anything. I need to tighten the budget even more. It's ridiculous, but... So this week, I have almost no junk food, basically. So poor me. I have to cut back on junk food. <laughs> but yeah, the, the foreshadowing of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead before he himself goes in to Jerusalem and we learn of his faith that he's to be crucified. And that he raises from the dead or rose from the dead. The resurrection of Christ. So yeah, Lazarus I think that is also one of the times we read of uh, Jesus actually crying. It's, uh, when he was aware that he's going to have to raise Lazarus from the dead. But he was too late. Uh. So powerful. Very powerful for real on Sunday, but most people, it's just the whole significance of it, even a lot of people call themselves Christians, don't really understand what these symbols mean these days that we uh, commemorate. So, I am not riding a donkey, <laughs> although the rider might be called an ass sometimes. Me. And I'm not riding into Jerusalem to my crucifixion. So, although this ride is kind of in honor of Palm Sunday, not a lot of similarities. Nobody's waving palms for me. Nonetheless, it was just a beautiful, sunny opportunity to do a quick little loop here. I don't really have a lot of gas. I'm not really thinking I want to stop for gas. But I'm doing the hard bit first. Just a quick little uh, cruise down the main street here. I don't know if you could tell from my voice or my riding, but I, I'm always a little nervous in this kind of traffic. I was expecting it to be a little quieter. But I guess uh, this is a safe neighborhood. They probably don't celebrate Palm Sunday. So they're just another day in the hood for them. So they're out, you know, doing stuff. Yeah, look at, pretty busy. Wow. It's, uh, let me look at the old, uh, yeah. 1220. I have expressed quite a bit of frustration lately out loud <laughs> but I also do things like look at my beautiful little uh, affordable Invicta Pro Diver that's on my wrist right now 
I thank my lucky stars that I, uh, a while, quite a while back when I had the Bulova, bought a small watch repair guy kit, like tools, watch tools. Uh, I also have similar little packet for uh, cell phones. You know, like a little suction cup to grab the screen. You know, there's little tricks that you can do so you don't mangle the device if you need to replace stuff. So good. But I uh, replaced the batteries in this little Invicta. So that's the second battery I've had to do. And I, I can't remember even when I bought this thing. A couple of years now. It, it never leaves my wrist, even at work. So work is brutal on everything. So I think somehow this thing, look at it. It just looks amazing. Like I've whacked it on all kinds of stuff. It's got some smudging on the glass, but that's probably just my own uh, um, like gross uh, oil or something for me. Like if I give it a wipe, it'll be crystal clear. Yeah, it's nice. It's a beautiful little watch. Very inexpensive. Uh, and it looks identical to the old uh, Rolex Submariner. Like this is a, what they call a homage. Deliberate. But it has the Invicta logo on it and stuff. They're not trying to be the Rolex. But they did copy the case. And it keeps perfectly good time. As long as you replace the battery ever. I think it's about a year and a half the battery lasted. So pretty good. Oh yeah. Alright. to ride with for a block or two. It's likely they'll go uh, left on Highway 10. But listen to that. That's maybe a Bassani? That's loud. Nice exhaust. And it looks like the other ones have got short shocks.
turn left anyway, and I'll never catch them now. No rush now. <laughs> I smell prank fries anyway. how far ahead they are now. They're long gone. Oh, yeah, they're already across that little bridge. And my nipples are hard. Pretty cold. Ooh, baby. Oreo 
girl. You're you're plenty fast. <laughs> you're too fast for me. We're just uh, clipping along here at 70 kilometers per hour. Very manageable for me. Country roads. This is really the kind of riding that you know a guy my age like. This is really appropriate. Not kind of out on the Trans Canada all the time. I would need a really heavy bike for that, I think. And I get buffeted a little bit on this, just on that little uh, Latner trunk road doing 80. Nice orange, I like that color. Yeah, we're almost up to 50,000 kilometers on this motorcycle. Here I was in. Double check. Yeah, I was in fourth. Doing well. I like this. Nobody behind me. There we go. Nobody behind me. I can just take her nice and cruisy. That's how we do. There, that's how I should be doing it. Last few times I've been close to that line, man. Yikes. <laughs> there we go, back into the neighborhood. This is a great little riding area. Again, I, the whole thing I went out and I thought, well, I could go to the dollar store and get a bunch of cheap snacks and yada yada, but I've still got a little bit of weight to lose. I, I gained a, you know, a couple of Harley pounds. I shifted a bit early there too. But yeah, I've gained a few Harley pounds. Certainly not the end of the world. Now we're going to show you a little bit of this uh, 64th. Day drive. <laughs> the guy in front of me. Looking at oh my god, the trees, look at them, aren't that? at that speed you want to ship. This guy was going slow when you could do 60, and now he's speeding when you can do when you're supposed to be slowing down. Oh, typical. Very nice. Good old 
Wade Road. Yes. All about the cheap thrill. Not blowing cash and having fun anyway. I even have a couple of uh, selfies on my phone that I've got to upload from the other day. There we go, 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 go. <laughs> nice timing. I've timed the lighting good a couple times today. might have been heading for the ferry. That's where I should have gone. I've only ever taken my bicycle on the ferry once and never a motorcycle. Cars a few times back in the day, but I'm not really that well versed with the ferry uh, system with vehicles. I normally do walk on. Honestly, it would just be because I'm stubborn and want to do the ride that I take the motorcycle if I go shopping over there. At some point, just according to my personality type, I'm the kind of person that does a lot of research. And then when it's time to pull the trigger, I'm pretty aggressive. So, uh, but I'm not the kind of guy just to go off, right? I can do impulsive things, sometimes, but not, not with a lot of money or anything, not when it's high risk. So, I do want to own another small uh, sailboat again, but like I say, it's all about coordinating moorage and uh, possibly having a, a sailing partner to help you with it. Not so much the sailing part, but somebody that lives on the island can, you know, drive down there and check on it. If I ever had to leave a boat at anchor. So there's a lot of consideration. There were times that I had some support with owning sailboats, and times that I didn't. So I know both sides of that coin. By support, meaning like, oh, somebody gives you a slip, or, you know, you sublet, or, you know, just whatever. You, 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 you get a, uh, something goes your way. <laughs> you get lucky, and you get into a marina for a summer or something. It's nice. It's a nice lifestyle if you can, you know, pay. But the truth is, near Vancouver, there's just no space. Like, waiting lists everywhere. No matter how rich you are. Doesn't matter. Unless you're building your own marina. Wow, this is weird. I might be able to make all the northbound just. Oh my god, look at this guy. Oh my god, sorry, Lord. That didn't take long. Yep. Too wealthy to have any brain cells. You don't need to give the motorcycle any room because I can't hurt the car. They don't care about me. Here we go. Oh my god, another yellow light. How dangerous is that? <laughs> driving into the sun, so I need to be aware she may not see me at all. I had to take that third position. How are we doing here? Stay alight. I got five seconds. I'm going. Did good. Did good. I keep uh, thinking I'm going to have to bail and turn left due to traffic. That's why I'm in this lane. But it seems to be going okay. Not that busy. Sure is nice now that they did a little paving. There we go. I'm making good headway. Ah. Nice little 
spring, early spring. It's like the first week of spring. Oh, I hit something there. Ooh, ooh, almost went down. The edge of a concrete vault. So there's like an edge of it and I, I just hit, kind of fell off the edge. I was right, right on the edge and then I slipped off the edge. That was weird. Yikes. Just shows you how quick things can change when you're only on two wheels. Due to this silly uh, strata scheduling, if I had a partner, it wouldn't be a big deal, but there's nobody at home to let these people in. Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it, yo. I'm getting off of this road. Yeah. I might not make this one. I did it. Wow, that was weird. I made it. Silic! Smooth as silic! <laughs> Ooh, yeah! You see, this is the danger of doing a short ride. By the time I get to here, like an hour later, after a little loop across the flax, I just want to keep riding. I actually don't want to go home. I just want to keep burning gas. You know what I mean? Just for nothing. No apparent reason. I have no destination. I'm looking at already the, the little blossoms over there. You know. Like, ooh, spring. Like our brains, I, I think it must be. We're just kind of on autopilot, really. Like when spring hits, we just go on uh, autopilot. We start to change our moves. We stay outside later. But again, as a you know, my first year riding, even though I'm a two-wheel person all my life, um, yeah, I don't really need to be planning big, big trips or big rides uh, until the summer. I want to do a couple group rides as well, like a couple of traditional group rides. That'd be fun. I'll do a few of those. But again, you do that stuff all the time, eventually somebody's gonna go down <laughs> and they'll take half the group with them. So, like you learn, you just pick and choose who you ride with, you be careful. And although I want people to ride with, I've, God's probably saving me a lot of trouble making me ride like a lone wolf for the whole year. I've logged a lot of miles all on my own. I've learned how to let cars know when I'm scared. Like, dude, I, I gotta slow down. This corner coming up sucks. So I've been able to, you know, kind of over brake check once in a while to the point where initially they might be mad, but then they see the corner and they realize, oh, this guy's on a big, you know, cruiser bike. We, the peg's way too big, you know, this kind of stuff. You just gotta take it easy. So a, a few cars, a few times, just using the old, uh, you know, ESP, kind of trying to let people know, hey, back off. <laughs> so I've been, I've been doing okay. I've only had like, uh, I, I guess winter, I haven't had as many close calls as I did last summer. So I don't know whether that is just me getting better at avoiding it. Like I'm, maybe I'm just learning to look farther and farther ahead. I don't really know. perfectly. There you go. Nice. Hit the, hit the yellow line, didn't go over it. <laughs> Painting within the lines. Well, thank you if you uh, watched this uh, video. And if you watched the whole thing, you probably need help. All right, peace.